VS Code supports working with Jupyter Notebooks natively, so it's incredibly seamless to get started. In VS Code, head over to the extension view, search for Jupyter, and install the Jupyter extension. Now, if this is the first time you've ever installed the Jupyter extension, you will see a welcome experience for getting started with Jupyter Notebooks. This is a great tool for walking you through the steps to create your first notebook and follows the same workflow that we'll be going through in this video's demo. You can always navigate back to this welcome experience by opening the command palette, running the open walkthrough command and selecting the get started with Jupyter Notebooks option. You will also need to install the Python extension, which is necessary for connecting to the Python environment that runs your notebook code. This extension also provides language features like IntelliSense and syntax highlighting. So let's get started and create our first notebook. In the command palette, run the create new Jupyter notebook command. This will open a blank notebook file. And you can save, open, and edit this file just like any other file. So let's save it as my first notebook. Now there's one more step before you can start running code in your notebook, and that's connecting to a kernel. The kernel is essentially the computational engine for executing the code. So in the top right of your notebook, click select a kernel. You will see a dropdown in the command palette to connect to a Python environment or to an existing Jupyter server. Select Python environment, and if you have Python already installed, you will see your Python installation listed. Now you can select this global Python environment, but it's recommended to use a virtual environment instead. You can create a lightweight virtual environment using Python, and we actually have an entire video about getting started with Python in VS Code that talks more about this. Anaconda is also a popular choice for creating a virtual environment, and we will link to that documentation in the video description. Once you have your virtual environment created, you will see it in your list of Python environments when selecting a kernel. So now that we have a kernel to execute the code, let's run a simple code cell. I will write a basic print hello world and run the code by clicking the play icon to the left of the cell or using the control alt enter keyboard shortcut. If prompted, click install to install the IPY kernel package, which is a lightweight package necessary for running Jupyter notebooks in VS Code. Now we have running code in our notebook and that's all the setup you need to do. So let's explore this notebook a little more. In the top left of the Jupyter toolbar, you can create a code or markdown cell. You will also see these actions appear if you hover directly below or above an existing cell in your notebook. Each cell has a language dropdown in the bottom right corner that you can use to change the language. Markdown cells are very helpful for separating and describing different sections of code. So I can have multiple section headers and a nested section that I can collapse, for example. In the outline view of the notebook, you will see these markdown headers listed. This outline view allows you to quickly view and jump to different sections of the notebook. You can think of it like a table of contents. You can then delete a cell by clicking the trash can icon or by selecting the cell and pressing the delete key. Now let's write a little more code. I asked GitHub Copilot to generate a sample data set for me showing different products and their price and stock. So I'm going to title this section product analysis. In my first code cell, let's first import the pandas package for the data frame. Then we can initialize a data frame given that Copilot generated data. Then in this next code cell, I want to have some sort of visual in our notebook. So let's import the matplotlib package and create a scatter plot showing the relationship between the stock and price of the products. Now, as I'm writing code, notice that there's automatically IntelliSense as I write. So coding in a notebook has virtually the same experience as coding elsewhere in the editor. Another example is that you can use the go to definition in a notebook cell to navigate to a symbols definition. Now that I have these code cells, we've already seen how we can run a single cell. You can also run multiple cells at once with options like run all in the toolbar, or when focused on a cell, you can either execute all cells above or execute the cell and all cells below. You can even head to the outline view and run these cells in a particular section. So there's a lot of flexibility here depending on your workflow. So I will run these code cells and while it's running, let's take a look at this top toolbar. You can interrupt the running process and you can also click on go to, which will take you to the currently running cell. Once the code is done running, there's a scatter plot generated right in the notebook. So this is a really cool basic example of how you can have a mix of text, code, and visuals all in one notebook. 
I also wanted to touch on a couple of options for debugging cells. You can run the code in a cell line by line, or you can place a breakpoint and debug the cell by selecting Debug Cell in the Run Action menu. This will bring up the full set of debugging features supported in VS Code, such as the ability to step into other cells or to inspect variables. Now, one final feature I want to show is the Variable Explorer. In the top toolbar, click on Variables. After executing cells, any variables will show here, so you can quickly see their values. Certain variables, like data frames, can also be visualized in a custom editor. You can click the pop-out icon to the left of the variable name, and you will then be shown recommended extensions for viewing the data, like the Data Wrangler extension. If you choose to install that, you will have a really easy way to further view and analyze your data. We have a video about mastering your data using Data Wrangler that will teach you more about this extension and help you become a data science pro in no time. Those are the basic components for getting started with Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code. There's so much more that we could get into, so let us know in the comments if you'd like to see some more advanced features. And make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our other videos on all things VS Code. Happy coding!